Welcome to Scale Model Basics. I'm Tim Kidwell, and we're going to talk about soldering photo etched metal. Now, why would we solder photo etched metal? Because we want strength. Really, that's the, that's the main reason for doing it. You can put photo etched metal parts together with super glue, but super glue, remember, we've talked about photo etched metal in the past, and it can be slippery. So, photo, so the photo etched metal and the super glue may not hold as well as you might want it to. So that's when you're gonna to turn to solder. Now, what do you need to do some soldering? Well, obviously, you're going to need solder. <laughs> that's gonna be the first thing that you're gonna need. Next, you're also going to need something called flux. Now, flux is the magic ingredient for soldering. Uh, without getting too scientific, it's what we're gonna brush on to make the solder stick to the metal. Then you obviously need a soldering iron. Now, everything in front of this handle on the soldering iron, this whole thing gets hot. All right, so you don't want to touch that. It's going to get extremely hot. It's an iron. A couple of things that you want to keep in mind when you're going to solder photo etch, you want to have the finest tip on the soldering iron that you can get, okay? You don't want something that's round or chisel shaped. You want to try and have a, a very fine tip because you're going to be working on very fine parts, right? So make sure that whatever soldering iron you pick up has a, a tip that comes to a nice, uh, a nice point on it. Now, cost-wise, you don't have to go out and pick up the biggest or the best, you know, soldering iron that, you, that money can buy. This thing is 20 years old and I've done plenty of soldering with it and it works just fine. And I think I paid maybe $22, $23 for it back in the day. Um, you're also going to want to make sure that you get a stand for your soldering iron. Uh, some soldering irons come with a stand that folds out. Other, I have a, I have a small stand that's basically wire that folds out and it sits on the, on the workbench. The problem with both of those that I find is that it tend, they, they support the soldering iron at an angle that points it upward and I have burned my hand going for the soldering iron by, what did we just discuss? All of this is metal. So yeah, I've burned my hand. So now I go for a stand that looks something like this. It keeps me from touching the hot iron um, and it puts it at a nice angle just to, just to take it right on out and use it. Now you're gonna see that I also have a controller here to help control the, the temperature of the soldering iron. You don't need one of those. You can just plug the soldering iron right into the outlet or your power strip. Uh, the one thing that you're gonna wanna do though is you're going to just wanna keep an eye on how hot your iron is. It'll smoke, you know, but you don't want it to get overly hot where things are just melting super fast on you. Uh, if that starts to happen, you're gonna want to, you're gonna wanna either unplug your iron or if it's a continual thing, you may want to invest in a temperature controller for your soldering iron. A couple of other things that you're going to need. A paintbrush that you have fallen out of love with because that's what you're going to use to apply the flux to the metal that you're going to be soldering. You're also going to want a, a piece of sponge just to get damp. That'll help to clean any so old solder off of the soldering iron. And if you, if you find that you're getting a lot of solder that just clings to the end of the tip, you may want to invest in something that looks like this. It's basically, it's basically a scouring pad inside a little container that you can use to, to get the, the hard to remove clinging solder off of the tip of your soldering iron. Self-healing mats do not heal themselves from melts or burns, right? So what I like to do is put a cork board down to protect the mat from any of the, the hot metal that I'm going to be using while I'm soldering. Something else that you're going to probably find useful is either a, a tweezers with a stand on it to help hold parts or even 
a third hand. Now, the only thing I caution you about using a third hand with uh, PhotoWatch parts, PhotoWatch metal parts, is that these can, these can squeeze pretty tight sometimes, right? These jaws can deform a r really fine PhotoWatch metal part. So if you have a thicker part, they're probably going to be okay, but be careful with using it with a thinner part that could very easily bend. And lastly, you're going to want some soft cloth. This is just an old t-shirt that I've cut up, but you're going to use this to clean up any messes, especially the flux after you're done soldering. So let's go through the process of soldering photo etch metal parts. First, we're going to apply the flux. Now remember, you've got your brush that you've fallen out of love with. You're going to go ahead and dip that into the, dip that into the flux there, and then just going to go ahead and apply it to where you're going to be putting the solder. Now the flux will stick. Where you put it. Okay, so you can see that it is right down in that corner. And I also put it, get my fingers out of the way, put it down in this corner as well. If you're just planning to tack your photo etch metal parts in place, what we can do is start by tinning the tip of the soldering iron. Basically, all we're doing is taking some solder and getting it on the tip of the iron. Okay? Then, get my piece down here. We've tinned it, right? And so we're just going to just Tack this right up at the top. And that's all that is, right? That's just tacked now. So it's holding it. There's a good amount of, of solder there. So the solder will continue to react to heat. So if you find yourself with a good amount of solder there, you don't have to actually get any more solder from the, the spool. What you can do is come in and use the tip of the tip of the soldering iron and just reheat and move that all the way down just like that and now you've got a nice smooth bead as opposed to tacking the joint you can also just run a bead using the wire directly off of the spool so we're going to follow the same sort of procedure that we did before which is one put flux on the joint. Starting at wherever you're drawing away from, what you wanna do is place the iron onto the metal, then touch the solder to the iron. As soon as it melts, you wanna pull the solder along the join and that's how we draw a bead. After you're done soldering, what you're gonna to wanna to do is take a soft cloth and go around your parts and just wipe away any excess residue from the flux that might be there. If you have flux on your hands, it typically washes with soap and water, so just go you know, wash them in the sink. Also, if you find that some of your joins are maybe a little bit rough or aren't as square as what you would like them to be, you can go in with a fine file and just clean those up, just like you would with you know any other model part, right? And just get that uh, worked to the point where you are happy with it. Now, using solder with photo etch doesn't have to be something that you're afraid of. It doesn't have to be an arduous or onerous process, right? And it can actually be fun if challenging. What you wanna do though is practice. And yes, I understand. You know, it doesn't seem like the best use of photo etch to practice on it. You buy a kit or you buy a photo etch set, photo etch metal set, and then it's like, well, I'm just gonna practice on it. Well, okay. So at first, you know, you use solder on parts that aren't going to be really obvious, just in case you don't do the best job with them. 
Uh, or if you buy a kit and you aren't planning on using the photo etched metal parts that are in there and some of them fold together, go ahead and use them as your test subjects, right? Learn with those. And you'll find after a couple of, of experiments, after doing it just a couple of times, you're going to hit a rhythm and you're going to understand how it works and how it works best for you. Thank you for watching. I'm Tim Kidwell, and I'll see you next time.